We are comicbookinvest.com on with three comic money coming to you with our latest interview. There we go. Oh, all right. Yes, is it? Yeah, that is gorgeous. Oh, I love that. It's pretty wild. So yeah, um, first installed, first we made. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. They're not home yet. They're uh, actually out. But, um, so. Um, I guess so, uh, we have a little interview thing. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. Thanks for thanks for joining us and everything. Uh, oh, no, no, you no, want no, us no. this way, or you want us? Uh, yeah. Let's. Uh, no, no, I can do it. I'm sure. Yes. Yeah, oh, you can do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Either way. Okay. All, All right. right. So, uh, thank you so much for. Uh, well, so we've already actually sort of hit record just because you're showing off that beautiful piece of art behind you. And I was like, yeah. man, I got to get... They'll probably walk in and he's like, what are, you doing, what are you doing? Get out of my house. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you, you gave us some great topics. Uh, th- through Comic Mind, we like to sort of talk about like you talking about things that you want to talk about. And we just sort of go off of it and then we'll actually write a, sort of an article based around what you talk about right. and give some of our opinions too, if we don't right. happen to share them within this talk. Right. Uh, but yeah, you, uh, I'm Chris and this is Pete. We usually have a third guy, um, family obligations this week. I mean, it's it sort of forgot when we were setting up the interview, there was Thanksgiving <laughs> week and I was like, Oh, yeah. shoot. Right. No, pretty, pretty <laughs> hectic week. Right. Uh, yeah. So we've been juggling, but we both have the, have the time free. I'm so thankful you do as well. Yeah, no problem. Man. Um, I'm probably going to have to move the, interview outside oh yeah outside, they show up but um it is that like, sounds fun yeah uh so it's a, it's you, a hectic hectic time Lots oh i understand on, but, yeah so uh so you gave us some great topics i mean mm-hmm. obviously let's just talk about what's behind you since it's behind you i remember on instagram you said this was like a five years or how long you've been working yeah, on this? so um a couple years ago i was playing with um a cityscape of um, of a Superman drawing that I did. Oh, I saw that. It was gorgeous. You posted Thanks, it the other day. Man. Thank you. And um, and my bro- my brother said, um, you know, I love Superman and everything, but that city is fucking amazing. So, <laughs> <part of> my- <laughs> oh, it is. So, so um, I I did a version um, that uh, without Superman in it, and um, and. Then I, I I explored the idea a little bit further, push it a little bit further, and then I I discovered this whole uh, fish islands thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know it was a thing that that was actually done before, because um, it was just um, playing around with just different perspectives and things like that. I guess initially what started that idea was um, I wanted to have a kind of vibe of when you're, you're coming into a city, say it's New York City or wherever. And the plane is actually taxiing and doing its thing, and just how mm. the city always just looks amazing. And I just yeah. wanted to do a shot like that, so started doing some exploration with the perspective idea, and then um, and then it turned out to be a thing called five point perspective, which I didn't, didn't even know it existed. I don't know if I've heard of that. Right. <laughs> then um, I pushed that <laughs> even further, and then when you take when you take five point perspective to its nth degree it eventually forms a globe. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know that either. Right. So if you just take all the lines and just from the vanishing point, bring it all the way out, everything ends up, um, it, it becomes, uh, I'll show you pretty clearly. So mm-hmm. this is the center of it. Mm-hmm. That's, the, that's the number one vanishing point. Um, and each top, so the top of there, that's the yeah. vanishing point up there. That's the vanishing point down here. That's the vanishing point right here, and then that's the vanishing point. So that's five. Yeah. So each line from the center, it goes out like an arrow. Okay. Yeah. And then from, so if this center line is straight, to maintain this vanishing point and that vanishing point, there has to be a slight curve when it reaches the center. And if you keep going with the slight curve when you reach the center, keep going with the slight curve when it passes through the the this center line by the time it ends up here it becomes a, a full circle gotcha yeah and it just goes all the way around yeah I, wow. I didn't i didn't know this i just i was just That's like tripping crazy. out one night and i and i'm like whoa this is kind of fucking crazy um <laughs> so so do you have like a, a pla like printed it on a piece of plastic so you could wrap it around something so you go like can it make actually globe did i do it right <laughs> <laughs> no no it was just um 
it was just a, a, a flat sheet of paper and just kept kept going, kept going just to see how far it went. Um, and they made a globe. And I guess that's um, crazy, right? They didn't right. teach that in the <laughs> How to Draw Comics the Marvel <laughs> Way book that I had that taught me the two vanishing points. Right, 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 right. Maybe three with the building yeah. going up, but not five. It was, that, that book was written by flat earthers, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking the next level, though. Five <laughs> points there. I guess so, dude. <laughs> yeah, so awesome. that's yeah, so it was just an idea, and then. Uh, there's an artist um, in New York. Um, he's from he's from the '70s, like minimalist, like post impressionist mm. guys were doing real minimal stuff. No paint spatter on the wall, none, none of that mm. stuff. They're just doing lines and color feel of stuff. Yeah. So there's this artist called Saul Lewitt, and uh, he um, he would just do some diagrammat diagrammatic drawings on the wall itself. Just hmm. lines and diagrams and things like that on the wall. And I, there's a museum in uh, New York called Dia Beacon. And um, I went there and I was just blown away by just the idea that you could just draw directly on the wall and they could just be huge. And then I had yeah. this idea, like, you know, why, why not take that, what he's doing, and have it something a little bit more relatable, mm, yeah. like a city itself. And that's how I just kind of started chasing this idea. And then, you know, just chipping away at it over five years that I, I wasn't like on it five years yeah <laughs> i can't time. imagine just, yeah just chipping away at it when i had some free time you know COVID showed up yeah you know i had no, nowhere to go <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, pick it up us, um, us too right yeah so it, eventually um i pushed it towards it it's till it's, it's complete and then i like making frames for my for my art and um so i feel like this piece i had to have a round frame yeah you know i feel like a square thing would just kind of let it down so uh, i never made a, uh, a round frame before so i just kind of went in so on it. do you actually like did you cut cut the wood and do all the piece by piece by piece to get the yes. round yeah yeah oh. um so my, my background is in industrial design which is okay. like making shit yeah um, I, I, is the language okay oh, you're good you're fine. Right. you're fine yeah just making shit and um you know so i'm, I'm familiar with making stuff and uh that's what pretty much what, what the background is. And um, I wanted to make something round, make a round frame off in this thing. So just even that is another exploration. You know, I just, I just get on these like fucking, these mad tangents, dude. <laughs> that's, <just chasing. laughs> that's awesome. So yeah, that's what this piece is. Yeah. So how, from industrial design to Marvel comics, then. Right, I know. Um, or so I guess Ruin or whatever is like your first piece or whatever. <laughs> Um, that journey was, um, um, while I was in college, um, I had some, some buddies that were really into comics and I was, I was as well. So, you know, when you're around people, oh, yeah. like minded, yeah. you kind of just like buzz off of each other. And then, um, I started saying, we started sending, like, we got the Mar drawing comics and Marvel way books and, you know, we're sending samples in a lot and getting rejected left and right. Um, <laughs> but on just like a little spare time, I'll knock out a couple of pages. Um, I, my stuff was awful back then. And, um, but I, I was certain I, I was great. <laughs> I was, <laughs> it's a different style. I, I mean, that's, I would, I would like to meet the artist that walked out and was just their first thing they did. In their know, little right? viral notebook yeah. was, was the thing that they, that beautiful Axel Alonso said, yes, that's the one I want. <laughs> but you know, you know, what's funny is, um, you're, you're blessed with delusion. When you're young. Oh yeah, you know. So um, I was lucky enough. I was delusional enough to just. I just kept trying, and um, eventually, uh, one editor liked the stuff, and he just gave me a shot, and that uh, you know, rest of the history. Yeah, yeah and, and I guess to explain that, so that became like a thing. I started getting more work, so the industrial design stuff started getting less, in, as far as like, you know, the, the amount of work that I do, and then. It be, then comics became more of the thing, and eventually just kind of just it's you know ebb and flow. But but it seems like like knowing that you have an industrial design, like I I see that in your when you when I go to your website and I see your portfolio posts and I see your motorcycle designs and the, right. when you when you did you go out there and play, like you play with a a design element of hey I'm gonna okay I'm not just gonna draw a motorcycle I'm gonna show you what the inside of the motorcycle looks like so that you can see what's on the outside. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. 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 It's um it, it's from this training that 
you you kind of just learn to think that way, you know, um, learn to think and not just um, uh, why, but how, you know. So yeah, I gotcha. That's that's where you you brought up like I mean you had more time on your hands from COVID and that's one of the things like we we started doing this sort of podcasting because we none of us live in the same city we right. uh, we also right. said okay we we write for a, a comic book website we 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 just have time on our hands we're not being able to go to shops or, so we said hey let's see who else has time on their hand and eventually it became <laughs> everybody <laughs> and right. Pete and I are not we love comics. Sh- we love going to comic shows. Well, actually, but we're very scared to talk to the artist. We were, we were, why? Why is that? Because you're big and you're Karen Grant and your your name is on this book and we we can't yeah. we don't know what to right. do. Right. And then we've now we've done a few interviews and we love getting to talk to you and hearing the stories that you have. Right. And right. hearing, I can't even remember who it was. He was like, "Dude, man, I just want to talk to someone." You're there for <laughs> X amount of hours, and <laughs> right. you'd rather talk to someone about a real story than that guy that's su- can you sign this one now can you sign right. in this certain spot because i got a cgc label it and i gotta send right. it off and and i just like the stories i mean i have graded books and yes i do sell comic books because i have to buy my the nicer kind but like i was lucky enough to grab that gorgeous uh hip-hop variant you did that, right right oh, that, that one, yeah. yeah that all new wolverine and it was one of those like that's not leaving my collection that's not getting graded that's just a gorgeous <laughs> book right. and it was i was so excited to find it because what the hell? I mean, you made Wolverine just freaking badass. I mean, of course, it's a great DMX album to choose from. Right. Yeah, it, it was really, um, it was more Axel's idea. He had this uh, vision because uh, he's a, uh, we're both hip hop fans and um, he um, pr- proposed the idea and it, we, it just kind of bubbled up to being something real cool. Um, yeah. yeah. So if you have a lot of different styles that you, you worked in, like outside of like the technical, like like a lot of, a lot of painterly kind of, kind of stuff I've seen right. Right. Too on your side, it's, it's gorgeous. Right, thanks, man. Um, I, I I'll say um, to that is uh, I'm I'm just an art geek, man. I like art, so if I see it, I'm gonna try it. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So it's like, um, and I like giving credit to to the value of something. Like, I, not not the fact that not just the fact that I'm doing my thing. I need to, you know, I I, I gotta appreciate someone else's thing, and then I'll see why it works. And, mm-hmm. And then I'll just get, catch a buzz and be like, you know, okay, I'm going to try this a little bit. Try to play with this here and play with this there. But yeah. I think overall what it does is um, it, it just makes you a better, better artist, make you uh, more open-minded and make you um, – and, and make your, your, your main thing just a little bit better. Yeah. 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 Take the, the bits that, that work best for you and just kind of work it in and roll right. it all to something bigger. Right. That's cool. Right, right, yeah. right. Because, like, I mean – piggybacking off what pete said like just going through i'm i'm digging the the ink watercolor sort of thing you got going and and but then at the same time i see this digital side of you and like how do you it i mean when you get commissioned not i guess not commissioned but like when you get asked to do a cover or something how do you Mm. determine hey i'm gonna do it on (laughs) procreate or hey i'm gonna do it mostly depends on the deadline um um it depends on deadline, depends on subject matter. A lot of the different styles come from, because I do a lot of different design work in animation, video games, mm-hmm. and film. And um, the different producers, art directors, they'll have an idea. And sometimes it's not even just them. Sometimes the project itself just, just needs a certain but particular style. And then it goes from there. You just you know, try some ideas, see what works for the, for the project, play around with it. You know, until it, and one of them work hopefully, and um, yeah. just kind of roll with that. Yeah, because you did. Um, so speaking of Axel, you did AWA's Hotel. Yes, those three covers. Like the first cover, like I had the set, and like the first cover is not yours. I don't think it's a photo no, no, real it was, hotel uh, rooms. Kari Andrews. Yeah. Okay. Andrews. Yes. Kari did the first one, and he yeah. did it with his style. Yeah. And then you switched it, and you completely owned it. Like. <laughs> I, I was commenting, and I like I do a weekly article that just basically lists the books coming out during the week, right. and I pick the covers I like. Yeah. And every week I picked the the sexy girl on the bed looking yeah. at the hotel, <laughs> and then I picked the freaking scary as hell clown. That clown, like that, right. that was or jester or whatever it was. I was like, have, have you read what? the book? Have you? Read I have the not book? read it yet. Dude, I, it's, it's so it's so wild. It's so, so it's a crazy story. 
like uh axel we interviewed him early on right when uh year zero was coming out like yeah. right after yeah. i guess it was you know, man it was almost august yeah uh, we interviewed him and he talked about that book and it, it was I was an idiot. I didn't realize it was hotel. Oh hell! It took me yes. a while to realize. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that book is, is that book is insane. It's uh, it's a fun book, lots of twists, a um, lot of surprises, and it's so. I mean, it's just wild, man. It's just wild. I, I highly recommend it. You don't have to be a comic book fan or anything. Uh, it's just a wild, some wild stories. Yeah, and, and I just, yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, I that's yeah, that's really cool. Because I've seen that, and then you did a one random store exclusive for the AWA. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, they had a Ronin book that they wanted. Um, That's right. Wanted that uh, an extra cover for that, and I was, you know, um, just jumped in on it. Um, I, Axel is, my, is a real good friend of mine, so I was like, you know, it, it's all about who you work with. Pretty yeah. Much. So yeah. I was like, um, his enthusiasm is infectious. Again, Excellent. after we talked to him, I basically went out and bought all yeah, of every day. everyone I could find. Look, yeah, I have the first set again. of the upshot and AWA books over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Axel is, is dope. Um, so it was, it's always a pleasure just working on some of his books, uh, you know, things like that. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So, what are you like? Of uh, like video, or you said video games and movies. When we pull up your site, we see like the GI Joe movie. Like, what did you do with that? Yeah, um, the. I did a lot of uh, pre-viz uh, stuff. So the producers, before even the stories were even written, um, they had uh, elements that they wanted in the movie. They, they want a motorcycle. They wanted this. They Concept wanted that. Kind of they thing. Were, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they, were, um, I con- they, I was working with a lot with uh, Hasbro Group at the time, and uh, so on several of their projects, all, as, as one of the few ones that actually made it on the screen. <laughs> Um, so, so wait, you're the one who designed Battleship. <laughs> <laughs> they made that too. <laughs> I know, right? Um, yeah. So that's what how that came about. So just a lot of early development stuff, and then a lot of that stuff ended up on in the movie itself. So like so. the drones and stuff, and the they came yeah, in, they shoot the desert out. Like those were your concept designs. Yeah, and the um, and and the 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 bike. Um, I think oh. it was it was uh, whose bike was it? One of the some of the vehicles in there. I, I Did you do the um, the robot uh, Marlon Wayne's and the crazy like GI Joe super suit? Uh, I did. Um, I did oh, uh, his good. tank. I did um, the the motors the motorcycle um, and some other like superfluous stuff that didn't even make it yeah. to the movie. Yeah, That's, um, it was that so, sort of exciting. Was that the first time that you're like? Dude, you were, I did that. Guys, hey, that was me who drew that. I designed um, that thing. All right, what, had you already, that was old hat for you. You've had that happen before. No, I, actually, I've done a lot a lot yeah, of like video game stuff. Yeah, the Matrix stuff, or the, uh, a lot of video game stuff. Um, so, I mean, it's it's real fun to say that that's my stuff, but there are so many other people in there. So if I, I, <laughs> yeah. I see it. <laughs> I'd see like one little speck of you know that's my stuff you know so I mean overall just it's fun to just to be on the ground level of projects like that and um, I really like blue sky stuff so, you know just like early early phases where I get to just dream and yeah. play oh, wow. yeah yeah that's the real real fun fun parts huh. yeah. it would be sort of cool to be on the very beginning hey the producer or the they just throw out an idea and you're like. Let me see what I can do. Give me two yeah. days. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yes, exactly. That's that's my my favorite uh, parts. Like when, you know, I get two lines. You know, it's got a, it's a robot that you know that does this or this or that. Then I'll just go play <laughs> with it and then send the the imagery back to the director or the producer. Then they'll, you know, they'll get inspired and then they'll say, all right, I like this direction. Go here. Then yeah, you know, try and then, yeah, and then eventually from that. You know, eventually something happens on the, on the screen. So it starts yeah. that simple. Well, there's only like two lines they'll give you. And it's yeah. Like, I want a robot who can dance. And like, right. <laughs> yeah, more, that's it pretty works. much it. Right? That's pretty much it. And because um, it's a creative process, and everyone is is in on the creative process. So, you know, the writers are inspired by some of the art as well. Because it's mm-hmm. never it's never rigid. You know, so it's never rigid that this is the script and that's what's going to end up there. You know, it's um. You have a plot or ideas, and then you have a list of things that kind of make it across. Some things make it, some things don't. So that has to make it tough, though, with some of the comic stuff. Then, 
because some of the comics of it, it is rigid. It's like, nope, so and so, they look like this. Or, yeah, that's why like I kind of phased out of the whole comic book. <laughs> <laughs> I get, I, I get, I see that. I, I get, yeah, it. Like, yeah. It's a little bit too, um, it, you know, the the comic panel is 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 a metaphor for comics. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a box. It's a box. So, um, but that stuff is still fun, though. So, you know, I'll, I'll dibble and dabble whatever I can. Oh, yeah. So, I guess that's why I would, to me, that would be more attractive of doing like the short run, like indie books or whatever. Like, hey, they're only going to do six issues or they're only going to do four issues. I can spit yeah. whatever I want out. If they yeah. like it, they like it, but yeah. I don't have to come back. I don't have exactly. to keep doing it. Yeah, exactly. Right. You're right. And, um, and like I said, more more blue sky stuff. I really like to just dream and get in there, play around, and then get out and move on to some, something else. So, which I mean, judging by I mean, looking at your website, like, and well, it's here. Actually, let's just look at it. It blows my mind some of the stuff you have. Uh, <laughs> like, just because you you're right, you're all over the place. Oh, here, Pete, share my how do I share my screen? I always forget how to do this. Uh, it should be down at the bottom. Okay. And it'll give you option to uh, what you want to share. Nope, nope. Where nope. Is the, there's. I want to share. Oh, there's her screen. Yeah, way way at the bottom. Share. So the craziness here. Let's like your web. Like when I look at your projects, like you have your store here. You can buy a print of that beautiful thing behind you, which I love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, which is right down here is of that five point perspective, but uh, your projects just sort of crack me up and I love them. Like the different ones all over the place. Like you're, you're so diverse. Oh, Prince. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, that was, I guess that was another one that didn't really quite make it to, uh, to the finish line, but uh, <laughs> you never know. Um, well, yeah, um, it, it's, I'm kind of a geek dude. So, you know, if some, comes across the table and it looks interesting i'm gonna um take a crack at it and uh star wars yeah that was that's, right. yeah the star wars stuff is a lot of that stuff i, did, I do a lot of co concept work for hasbro okay and um some of those things make it to toys some of them make it to games some make it to the to the film and um yeah so generally that's kind of how it works Okay, so we do that's really, awesome. so we get to see your thought process as you can sort of go through. That's I love that. Like, you're willing to share your like the process you went through. Maybe not everything, but hey, as an artist, if I come in and go, hey, I love your style. How and how can I learn? Right. And I look and see, hey, this is your sort. Okay, the motion, the flow. Yeah. It's still rough. It's not perfected. This is just me. In, yeah, I guess you call it blue sky. Right. Um, right. Right. And uh, it's a lot of that stuff is um, uh, uh, it's directed to younger artists that are you know have have ideas or want to be inspired that that kind of thing. And it's I, I think it's just fun for comic fans, video game fans, movie fans that just oh, want yeah. to you know get a little bit more insight into how things work. You know the inner workings of a uh, concept art. And yeah, that's, kids today, they don't know how lucky they are. Like with yeah. the access they have to artists, <laughs> the, right, right, the process right, right. and all that stuff. Like when I was a kid, I liked to draw, but I couldn't get any of that. I had to go <laughs> through my wizard magazine and get two pages of how to draw like a bicep. And like, well, that's right, what I know how to do that. We crack up, or I think it's funny. Like at the more artists and writers and people we've talked to, they're like, "Yeah, kids just text me on Instagram, DM me all the time. Go, <laughs> hey, what color pen was that that you used in that drawing? <laughs> what, what?" And I'm just like. Pete and I are old enough to go, I would never think to do that. I would never right. bother to ask what pen you used. Like I'm I, like, it took all the courage I had to start asking artists, Hey, and uh, to be offended or not offended, they reject me. I don't, it's, now I'm to the point. I don't care. I get more rejections. <laughs> right. And you're actually shocked at just how enthusiastic artists are. Right. Yeah. Like, just to even yeah. just talk about, you know, just, just to talk to a person. <laughs> again i was scared at shows i don't know why it was, it was something intimidating about being on this side of the table while they're sitting there drawing or something and i'm going right. i don't want to interrupt him he's sketching something yeah i, I get i get you i get you I, we all have our um that thing that you know that it's supposed to be like so distant that we're not supposed to touch it or have it and that, that kind of things so I, I get it i just don't want to be the pest you know i don't want to be that guy <laughs> the irritant Right, right. 
but now there's COVID, so um, we're begging to be irritated. <laughs> <laughs> how else has COVID changed? Like not only giving you time to work, how has it changed how you go about being you? Or well, um, you know, I, I guess everyone's trying to figure it out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what it's what's normal. I, I think it's still March, right? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we just hit pause. Right. So we're one real long pause. <laughs> right. It's like a frozen shot of March. So, yeah, man, it's just trying to find your own lane, uh, trying to find your own creative lane, um, trying to find outlets. Um, and, yeah, it's, uh, and, you know, now that uh, Comic-Cons don't exist anymore, you know, but just life doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. You know, how do you really channel it? I think right now what, what I'm trying to do is uh, among my, my artist buddies, I've been, you know, because everyone's kind of in a, in a funk, you know? Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. don't even realize that they're in a the funk because it's like, you know, creativity comes from being around people that you like to be around, you know, getting inspired. You get inspired yeah. when you're not even expecting it, you know? So, so what I've been doing is really trying to like, you know, Hustle the artists, you know, and even you know on 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 Skype and Zoom and things like that, just to you know get people just to mingle and you know, even virtually mingle, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, and um, I'm just trying to get some inspiration going, whether wherever it's at, you know, um, and share ideas, share whatever in the same same way we're doing right now. So yeah. tr- reach, reaching out more, reaching out more trying to get other artists to get involved, get, you know, show me their secret stuff that they're working <laughs> on, you know, all that kind of thing. Well, that's what one of my good friends, he's an artist, like he's he's never had the courage to put himself out there to like a, a to Marvel or DC mm-hmm. or anything like that, but he's now started, hey, okay, I can't just sit in my room and uh, just draw by myself. Like mm-hmm. he now has figured out how to rig his phone and his computer so that he can sit and draw and then mm-hmm. do a zoom call with someone who's doing the same thing. And they just mm-hmm. look at each other and talk with through what they're doing. And, yeah. And, and it's like a virtual, process. virtual studio, right? Yeah. yeah. And that he set it up and it's awesome. I've watched him do it a couple of times. I'm like, dang. And like the creativity he's shown from doing that. And then he's like you, he can't stay focused long enough to, to and one thing. So now he's designing toys and he's designing, right. doing drawings and everything. I mean, I guess you like, there's, he took an old X Men character and turned him into Moon Knight. Wow, like, that's awesome! So he just sort of played <laughs> around with that, that type yeah. of stuff. But like, that's what COVID sort of brought about for the artists that I, I've run into and talked to is just that there is creativity. It's just different. It's mm-hmm. so different because you can't just go down to I. I don't. I mean, and we've sort of talked to a few that's the stu- our studio is still around. Like, do people still do artists going, are the, going to the studio? No, no. Yeah. Everything yeah. everything's virtual nowadays. Yeah. Really. Um, and so, at, le- at least in, during COVID, everything's uh, virtual. Um, even the film studios, everything's just shut down. No- nothing is yeah. going on. Yeah. So the wow. So they they wanted the few, as few people as possible. Actually, like if you had to film something, just the people that have to be there. If you, yeah. Anything that can be done back in, in the in your house, do you know. it. Do it there, right? And yeah. I'm I'm gonna be honest, dude. I kind of like it because I mean. For the last couple of years, I was working on a film, and I mean, just the going in every day, just kind of it, it takes takes it out of you. So yeah, I, I like, uh, yeah, I like the remote thing. There's, but I do struggle with the other side of it though, because I didn't realize how social I was, is how much I needed that interaction. <laughs> and there's, there's like too. when we finally like started doing this, I was like, I'm getting an outlet, talking for twenty minutes. To, I've never met to sometimes to four hours. I'm like, I'm what the heck? I don't know this person, but we've been sitting here talking. Um, right. And that's made a difference too. But man, I miss that part, but I love working from home. It's that mm-hmm. weird. Mm-hmm. Like I love it's the a blend. more. Yeah. It's a, it's a yeah, good blend. Yeah. I think um, if you can go half and half, maybe like mm-hmm. two days at home and three days at, at, at the office, I think that, that would probably be ideal, but yeah. you never know. I think um, yeah. everyone's going to figure out how it all going to play. It's all going to play out, you know? Yeah, who knows how we're gonna go back? I don't know if it's ever gonna go back exactly to how it ever was. Like it I, might I doubt it. Blend. Yeah. yeah. I, I, how do you? How are you gonna get rid of the paranoia? I mean, <laughs> right? So. Well, apart from the paranoia, just again, it's just the ease. Like again, I don't have to drive into the office for my day job. Like I, 
I love the idea of just sitting. All right, I roll out of bed. I'm on. Like I don't all have right. to worry about what I'm wearing. I don't have to get dressed up. I don't have to shave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this this is um this is one of those those events where it's just shifted human evolution from. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, it's tough everything. doing stuff in a vacuum. Like especially if you're trying to do something creative, like you need to bounce ideas off of people and then speak, you know, to another human sometimes. Yeah. Not just yeah. type words and read, you know, texts and emails. Right. Right. Like, right. It's tough. I, it's a tough balance to find. It is a tough balance. I, I definitely miss. I miss the the life of um, going out and doing a lot of stuff. I, oh, I really yeah. miss that. Yeah. But yeah. But it's also it's been interesting. Just I mean I know you don't. You, uh, well, maybe you do dabble in the the comic side of this. The COVID has one other effect, and it's caused people didn't go out, so they weren't going to the bars, they weren't going to basketball games, they weren't going mm-hmm. to concerts. Mm-hmm. But so, a certain group of people still had money because they're working from home. Mm-hmm. So now, so now they're buying your comics that you're. I don't know if you knew that Wolverine cover went from being like a five ten dollar book. To now, it's it would sell for a hundred to hundred and fifty dollars. Wow! The Miles Morales yeah. Nas cover, like uh, for there was a short period of time where those hip hop covers went ballistic, and everyone right. was selling them because yeah. people had money to spend, and right, it, it, it was, was disposable income. It's so, a yeah, it's, yeah, and and uh, plus you you got to like factor in the absence of Comic Con, where yeah, you know yeah. That, that's a big big um, there's a big economy in that, you know, um, yeah. And, all that stuff is, is kind of gone. So yeah. people have that. It, it, you know, you know, I think it is. It's not necessarily just. I, I think I feel like it's a it's a creative process. I think people want to participate in the whole like you know like mm-hmm. I'm this is my thing. I'm doing this. I'm expressing myself with the, this kind of thing. And I think that's what the whole consumer culture is. It's a part of just like you know it's your people's creative process, and they need it. They need yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, I I don't want want those people to walk in on you. Do you have anything that you want to share that you uh, that no, you're working on that you want to? <laughs> um, let's see, let's see. Um, uh, the couple of stuff that I'm working on now is uh is is some some Marvel movie stuff. Um, so that's okay. top secret that I can't talk about, but at least. <laughs> Can you tell us who's, who, when Jim Foster <laughs> actually appears in the tour? <laughs> right. So, what are you designing? I <laughs> uh, know. <laughs> so there's some of that going on. Let's see, what can I share? Um, um, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm creating, so on, on, my, on my online platform, um, right now I'm trying to create an infrastructure for other artists to, um, to, create merchandise for for themselves. So I've been building this thing Mm -hmm. that allows artists to monetize their sketches, monetize their work, monetize their this, this and that. Um, And looking to launch that soon. I can't say much about it because everything's like licensed. I got you have to like, you know, sign off here and there. But um, that's something I've been working on. Thanks, man. I think um, what, what, you know, I I noticed that um, a lot of artists, they have, um, they have a lot of social media presence, but they're not uh, solidifying it with, you know, merchandise. Like w- what I said, what people want to participate. Yeah, so, yes, yeah. yeah, so I've been working on that, on the infrastructure of that. So there's that. Um, so uh, and, when you say infrastructure, I mean, I don't know how much, like you're saying, like a website you can go to and see your stuff or someone else's stuff. Yes. And then yes. Okay. they could buy yeah. whether it's a print or it's a postcard or whatever yes. it is. Yes. Yes. Instead of having to go through that Kickstarter kind of and yes, There's yes, a lot exactly. of artists who don't want to do that part. They will right. just all right, I just want to do the art. Somebody right. else please help me do the other part. Right, right. I can see and, that. Yeah, exactly. And um and it's and what it does it 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 um you can cross pollinate, you know, it's like oh, yeah. someone's this person's fans will discover this art another artist and so forth. So yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of work and it's um, you know, um a lot of investment. Um you know, sweat equity and financial investment. Yeah. But you know, over time it, it's it's coming together and I think it's just, it's just gonna be better for artists. I think it gives well, gives us a little bit more independence, a little bit more autonomy and allows us to be um a little bit more creative, you know. So, yeah. so especially in this environment, it's not being able to go to shows. Yeah, bro. And even after things go semi back to normal, you don't have to worry about travel. Like, there's a lot of things you'll still be able to do without yes. having to go through a, a lot of the hoops you might have to just to 
you know, sell a couple of pieces. Yes, yes. So, um, yeah, so it, it's, it'll be more like a mall type of thing rather yeah. than, um, rather than, because, you know, every artist's story is like an outlier. If it's like you're trekking out in the woods to go find some shit oh, yeah, to buy some stuff, right? There's, and there's a handful that are you can go to, and, okay, this person sells these, these six artists, and this yeah. person sells, but to figure out who these people are, yeah, and then typically they're trying to sell the big pieces, but like me as a small time collector, yeah, yeah I, I don't have seven hundred, eight hundred dollars to draw, but I would mm -hmm. love a headshot or I'd love right. a yes, yes. So yeah. um right. So and then the the, the idea like thing is the artists are getting paid for it. So yeah. It's not like some big corporation that's profit, profiting from it. So yeah, so it's it's this thing I've been I've been me and a couple guys we've been putting together and like I guess it's just a lot of work, and it's yeah. um. Yeah. The, the, I can imagine, the, but again, it is a really good idea because outside of like the artist's end, I'm also thinking like the consumer side. Like, right. I know Chris mentioned it. Like, I would get scared, and not want to bother artists, but I also didn't like going to a lot of shows because I didn't want to deal with crowds and wait in yeah. line. Like, but if yeah. I, I love art, and if yes. I could browse and shop in a place of comfort, and yes. that I would totally be into that. Yes. All right. Okay. So stay tuned. I'll, I'll um, <laughs> put it on blast. But you know, again, it's just the infrastructure of getting it right. Um, yeah. Getting just everything just uh, so good, smooth. So everyone's uh, doing well. Um, so Ooh. that. So there's that, and um, doing a lot of uh, uh, personal story <laughs> development type of thing. Uh, do, develop my own IPs and things like that. Um, yeah. So when you say your own IPs, are you taking them to the to the comic book level and like actually making them, or is it just a story that you want to take to a studio? Well, I've been in a, in discussions with a lot of studios about some some properties that I've been developing, and uh, you know, a, lo a lot of that stuff is um, is wow, well, it's wild west. Um, so. <laughs> um, so there's some of that going on. I, I feel like some properties are better. Better. At, I just want them to just be comics. I just want to make some cool comics, you know, yeah. that are different, you know, um, different, different ideas, different uh, cultural themes, you know, just different, different stuff. So I've been doing a lot of uh, uh, story development with that. Um, I'm from the the space of uh, uh, it's more about the the story and the idea rather than you know, this cool guy, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, the cool design, like, Oh, yeah. look at that outfit. I, yeah, I know it's kind of bizarre being an artist saying that, but yeah, I feel like it's, it's just more about stories and more about um, culture. Well, stories last, like yes. a cool yeah. character design can be changed by the next artist or the next person or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if it's a good story, I mean, I've, I've read semi bad drawing book, draw books because the story was good. Yeah, yes. But yes. I can't stick with a book if the, it doesn't matter how good the art is if the story's not good. It's, yeah, the story's, uh, it's, uh, it's just not moving. So, yeah, so I've been doing a lot of that. A lot of, um, a lot of writing with a bunch, uh, with a couple of other uh, writers. I've been developing a lot of different things. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll get to show it soon. Hopefully something gets across the finish line. And um, it gets made, you know. Um, but you know, it's, it's this world of um, speculation. You know, you never know what, yeah. what's going to work. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I think that's what's on the agenda. That and um, and making crazy art like this. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just such a badass piece. I love that thing. Thanks, like, dude. I appreciate it. Man. Like um, I'm so if I could convince my wife that uh, this big giant <laughs> circle hanging in my house, that's the type of thing. Or how big's the print? The print um, is uh twenty four inches. It's so twenty four that twenty four diameter. So okay. twenty four inches diameter. So it's um not. I got a spot for one. I'm looking at my wall. I'm like, is it right there. <laughs> it, yeah, and um, they're they're a limited edition too. So I'm not making a million of these things. You know, what? It's, um, <laughs> There's just not a printer out there in Pennsylvania. <laughs> right. right. It's okay. This is recorded. Chris has to edit it later, so I got time. <laughs> Yeah. So um, yeah. So it's it's and, and so the same thing again. Use taking the same concept and just offering it to other artists, um, you know, and just make just getting people to eat, pay yeah. rent, you know, uh, yeah. you know. COVID's um, really eliminated a lot of a um, lot of artists' um, income streams through you mm -hmm. know, like I said, oh, sure. Comic Con and things like that. So you know, just trying to fill the void. Well, and that's the thing, like. Yeah you're you you have a name that people recognize from the books that you've done mm -hmm. like 
through Instagram, like it's it's interesting to me. Like, but there's so many artists that people don't know who they are, and they they would go into those shows, and they might only sell 15 headshots, mm -hmm. but that was 15 headshots they sold. But now, how mm -hmm. do they build that? So that I think, like, I, I forget, like, there there are artists out there who haven't been on even seven covers or three interiors or anything mm -hmm. like that. So to get to get in the shows is the only way they can get recognized. Right, to do right, yeah. right, 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 and recognize and and pay the bills. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. most importantly so yeah so it's like something like, like i said i've you know there's a there's a void that needs to be filled and people need to be um you know just helping artists uh, helping artists eat you know yeah. and pay rent it's not that a marketplace is a fantastic idea i, I thanks I, man uh, great yeah it's uh yeah it, it's um it should have been done already but covid <laughs> yeah. yeah i need i need a t-shirt that says about COVID. <laughs> yeah yeah but uh Kara, thank you so much for joining us uh yeah, I'm, i wish mike could have been here he's a huge on artists and he loves talking art and he's he's right. the he's the guy who goes to shows and sits and talks to the artist for 20 minutes and right. gets a headshot pete and i are the guys who Love the book and wish we could go up and talk. Now, um, when the next show comes through town, I probably will go and sit and talk <laughs> to everybody. Yeah, once but, we go back out there. Now, now you, there, you, you, you're going to be those, those, those guys. Like yeah. those guys are coming. Like let's, let's get out of here. No longer introvert. <laughs> I'm going to be more extroverted when I go back out to the shows in the world. <laughs> right, dude. I mean, um, that's what COVID's done, right? It's allowed introverts to uh, get 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 their little thing out. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I can take that one there. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, thank you so much um, for joining yes. us. And thank you. Uh, yeah, it's it's been a blast. I, I'm I'm probably gonna get on the site and to try to convince my wife to buy the help that I can buy your little print. My pleasure, <laughs> dude. Um, thanks for uh, inviting me. You know, um, and uh, yeah, good luck on everything. And hopefully, we're all out of this craziness soon. Yes, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. All right. All right. See. So you guys have a good one. See ya. As always, head to comicbookinvest.com to check out the latest article in the three comic money and to catch our, our videos every uh, Saturday.